Okay, welcome back to my Humble Home Workshop. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, making uh, missing parts for a uh, Colchester student Mark I lathe. Um, basically the, um, the rear assembly of the paper turning attachment. Um, so I'm producing a video showing um, how these parts were made and um, I've got some drawings as well which uh, are available if you want to receive them. Um, I suspect that uh, other people have acquired uh, this lathe um, or maybe similar lathes and uh, found that uh, some of the parts of the taper turning attachment are missing. The reason I think that uh, others might have encountered the same problem is that uh, it would be very easy for these to be removed from the lathe, put away in a cupboard and when somebody shifts the lathe not realise that these are essential part of the machine. It, they have to admit they don't actually immediately lend themselves uh, from their appearance to being part of the machine. Um, so um, maybe that's why mine was missing. Maybe you have the same problem too. So um, the, the, the first part is uh, what I just refer to as the, um, as the connecting rod. And this is the rod which basically restrains um, the taper turning attachment to um, uh, to remain fixed in position with the bed, allowing the assembly to work. And you can see how that works later on the video. Uh, the features of it are, it, it has a, a thread which um, uh, is already in the, in the machine with a shoulder. That's quite important to get a nice location. Um, it's just got some flats on there for tightening up. It's got two lands um, so that um, when we slide the, the clamping piece over, we don't have to negotiate the whole length uh, we just uh, slide over this land and then this land and basically I found I just need two positions one at the end and one in the center to cover all um, the positions along the bed that I might need. Next part is the clamp itself um, this was made from a piece of mild steel um, uh, all of it was done on my Colchester student uh, with a bit of filing um, and um, that um, provides a convenient way of disassembling quickly uh, with, this, uh, with this clamp on here. The next feature is this uh, wheel which has uh, the two, uh, um, the two uh, shafts on each side. Actually it's an eccentric so one side um, the, the shaft is uh, concentric with the with the wheel and the other side it's slightly off center. I can't remember the exact dimensions, they're in the drawing. Um, and basically the role of that is to ensure that uh, there is a sufficient degree of freedom in the assembly to ensure that everything lines up when it's assembled and you can see that um, in a later uh, video clip. And uh, the largest part is, is this, which is the clamp that fits on the bed, on the rear of the bed. Um, and um, it basically has uh, two components, um, this clamp nut which fits under the bed, a bit like a, a bed stop I guess, uh, and this basically is a, a glorified bed stop but for the rear of the lathe. Um, and uh, these dimensions, I uh, took some care to, to measure the bed and get these dimensions and uh, the key feature is this land on the back here. Um, uh, this surface, this is a clearance and the third point of contact is the nut which uh, is a good fit in that and then that uh, basically clamps up under the bed with this socket head cap screw to uh, tighten it up. So um, the other feature is this assembly on the rear which basically um, uh, mates with the eccentric wheel and um, uh, this is a bit complicated because I don't have welding equipment. Um, I have to take uh, my small welding jobs uh, into the marketplace and sometimes I don't really get it the way I want it. So for me on this, uh, having already put a lot of work into making this, I, I simply uh, made this bracket here, uh, made this bush and I peened the end over and that was fine. That worked very well. Um, so um, that's the assembly. Um, that's how it looks and uh, these were the parts which were missing from from my lathe
So normally I leave the, the rear support um, disconnected uh, because there is a possibility of fouling, uh, fouling this uh, tie rod um, when you're, you're just using the lathe for other operations with this and so upsetting things. So I normally leave it off. So mounting is very easy. Um, the, there's a, um, uh, a gripping bolt there uh, which, which fits underneath the, the bed. So mounting, mounting is very straightforward. Uh, it just slides on. Um, with obviously with all the fittings loose, uh, this clamp slides over the over the connecting rod. Um, and then it's just a question of uh, locking it down and, and taking care that this eccentric wheel is, is used properly to uh, take out uh, any misalignment between the center line of this and the center line of the shaft or the, this fitting here. So that's, that eccentric is quite important. So um, the first thing I do is I just gently lock it down, operating the, the eccentric wheel just to make sure everything is slack. That's tight. Then I clamp the, uh, operate the, uh, then I tighten up the rear clamp. So now this is attached to the connecting rod. And the last thing really is just to make sure that this is nicely on center line, it is, it's slack, and then I nip these up. Now you may say, well, why, why have these? Um, um, the reason is to eliminate any possibility of um, backlash or, or uh, free play in this assembly. Because obviously any, any movement of this relative to the bed is gonna have an impact on the taper turning attachment. So this is all snug, all locked up, ready for operation. So if you watch the tool here, relative to our imaginary piece of work. So here we are, we can independently move in and out with the cross slide, um, just touch off the, the work there. And as I move out, you can see that the taper turning attachment is generating a nice taper for us, which is controllable um, and can be in either direction, this direction or that direction. And the, and the real beauty of it, it, it can uh, turn a taper of quite considerable length uh, for the size of the machine and, and also um, of uh, very low tapers. So uh, there is a quick summary. Um, if you want to see uh, this in use, uh, then I refer to uh, my video on um, making a pressure turning tool. And in that, um, in that video, um, I use this setup to turn a number three Morse taper uh, for for this, this device. So you can see this Morse taper here uh, was turned using the taper turning attachment. I need to uh, relieve this, this end of the a Morse taper a little more and to do that I need to do parallel turning so in order to do parallel turning um, I release the clamp on the uh, this bar which extends from the taper turning attachment and then this will come free and then once that's out the taper turning function no longer works because this uh, this doesn't slide relative to the carriage let's just see what happens um, uh, if we don't pay any attention to backlash and what what will happen and I found this from experience is that you will end up with uh, um, a step in the taper or effectively a delay be before the taper turning attachment begins to operate particularly if the angle is very low um, which might be the case if you're turning a Morse taper uh, which I think is about one and a half degrees um, yeah, roughly one and a half degrees uh, on, on one side of the taper. So it's a very small angle um, and uh, you need to um, think carefully about where backlash is and how to eliminate it. So just running through the potential sources of backlash, um, uh, I can easily see now um, several sources. The first is the fit between the cross slide nut and the feed screw 
the cross side feed screw which is underneath. There is inevitably going to be clearance in that and that's just the very nature of things. The second is the um, bearing housing be, uh, which uh, basically supports the uh, cross slide uh, feed screw. So I mean actually that's probably very minimal uh, because there is some preload in the way mine set up there is actually some preload in there so maybe we could eliminate that. I'm going to have to hold this by hand. The next, the next potential for backlash is uh, the fit between this slipper block, for want of a better term, and the top dovetail slide. So there's the potential for some movement there. Again, very minimal because um, it's a very nicely fitting assembly. And then the next opportunity for backlash is between uh, the lower dovetail slide and its housing which is attached to the rear of the carriage. So that, that uh, adds up to three areas. Now I've eliminated, I've already eliminated any movement in this because as I've said already that needs to be locked up well so there is no free play in there. I am actually producing this video um, and some other video clips uh, ahead of time uh, because we're planning to return to the UK for a while uh, so I won't have the opportunity to um, be in my workshop here um, so uh, I thought that uh, I would uh, um, produce some videos ahead of time, edit them and then publish them um, later an appropriate time. It's probably appropriate time anyway to, to have a break from my workshop. As you can see it's just getting too humid and hot I, I can't run the fan uh, when I talk with you like this, so uh, I have to turn it off and um, uh, perspire a little. If you like the video, uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up, and if you consider subscribing, then um, uh, you can see uh, other projects from my workshop later on. Thank you.